Uh, several factors. The question with regard to the useless microphone was about Scott Frost calling plays. and Basically, we, we do a lot of things uh, in, in collaboration. Our offensive staff is a, is a great veteran group of guys that have, have worked together in a lot of different systems. And, and right now in our system, we, everybody knows exactly what we want to do. Um, and that will continue. Secondly, Frosty's done a great job. Uh, he did a great job this spring. Uh, really tried to, to kind of let him go to a certain degree uh, this spring. And he's a guy that the players, uh, you know, follow quickly. And, and, and he did a great job kind of taking command. Um, and then thirdly, uh, we lost a lot of guys on our team last year that were great leaders on, on our sideline um, at practice in general. And their, their leadership style of just our, our deal of, of playing the next play no matter what given our best effort no matter what, I don't want to lose that at all. And I want to be able to, to look a defensive player in the eye, a special teams player in the eye, an offensive player in the eye, whatever, whatever the, the case may be at any given moment. And that's the only way that I would really be able to do that the way that I foresee that possibly happening. Um, still going to be intimately involved in, in game planning. Uh, and we'll take, I'll, take, I'll take the blame for all the bad ones. Coach, over here in the corner. So notice you haven't been wearing a hat a lot. Game day, what's the look going to be? Hat, visor, no hat? I have given that exactly zero amount of thought. My, I'll consult my stylist who doesn't exist. Right now, our biggest problem is knowing point A to point B, how to, how to get from the practice field to the meeting rooms. We just had a, a great walk through this morning, and we split up into two different special teams meetings. And how do you get there? What's the fastest path? That's, that's my, on my mind the most right now is making sure if the meeting starts at 10.10, everybody's there by 10.07, and we were, we were rolling. So we found out that, that our guys are fast in a lot of ways. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the, the energy is, is great, exceptional. And it always is. I mean, if a team is... is 12 and one or one and 12, they have great energy this time of year. Um, but our guys, our guys are great to be around. We had a lot of uh, great meetings yesterday and uh, excited to get back out on the practice field, obviously for, for real, so to speak, this afternoon and see what, what guys did over the summer. Um, moving into the, to the half field Dowling complex, if that doesn't motivate you to you know, give you a little extra juice, then again, you should, you should quit. Uh, it's just a phenomenal complex, obviously. In, I mean, incalculable thanks to, to Phil and Penny Knight and, and for everything that they've done as well as all the other donors that, that put that place together that I've said before, it's, if a building was a superhero, that would, that, that's it. Um, and, and it's still functional. It's still, uh, we had an incredible function the other night with a bunch of boosters where there were like 20 boosters, myself included, crying, you know, over the personal nature of whatever it was, whether it was a guy that played here 64 years ago or a guy that played here six years ago, former players, former coaches, that, that place has a soul and, you know, has a, the, I said to somebody the other night, I guarantee that an organic chemistry major in Topeka, Kansas, watched the press that we got last week, will never go to a football game, but will know that this is a special place in how they treat their, their, their students, not just their student athletes. Um, I think it's a quarter of a billion dollars in economic impact to our to our state and to our region. All those things are are important, and and hopefully we'll we'll yield a few more W's. Mark, the preseason polls come out. It's kind of where you guys have been in the past, top of the conference, third in the nation. In terms of expectations, do you get kind of a sense of calm from these guys? I mean, it's kind of been this way since they've been here, or do you get some excitement from them, or do you even kind of mention when when those things come out? Uh, the only time we would mention them is how little they matter. You know, I mean, it's a tribute to the past is, is really all it is. And, and uh, expectations are great. We want expectations. Um, our, guys, our guys are kind of used to the noise, so to speak, of whether it's big bowl games or big, big regular season games, expectations, hype, all that stuff is, is awesome. And that's where you, that's where you want to be. That's where you want to coach. That's where you want to play. But more importantly, they know that they need to have a great August 5th. And that's, that's what it takes. Sure. Yeah, we've had a, we've had a ton of talks about that, just in terms of how uh, 
how we've done things in the past here and elsewhere with, with quarterbacks and just working with different guys, um, <laughs> which, you know, obviously we can joke about Nebraska's passing game, but, uh, <laughs> and, but he, uh, I mean, the guy, you know, the guy has a, a, a great past, obviously playing for, for Bill Walsh and, and Bill Parcells and a bunch of, bunch of other tremendous coaches. Jim Mora was one of his position coaches, junior, um, at, at one of his stops. And, and so coaching is coaching. You know, our fundamentals are fundamentals, and, and, and he knows exactly what we want to do. And we've got, again, a bunch of great players that want to get better, and those are fun guys to coach. He's got a great group of guys. Coach, um, can you can you that a lot of continue on with? But what are you going to do to have your own? I do not own a stamp. I don't even have a pen on me. I'm not, and that's again the last thing on my mind is what can I do to make that you know that that just doesn't even exist. Um, I said earlier this month that if, if the guy that followed John Wooden quoted John, Wood, John Wooden a few times, is that, is that a bad thing? Is that a problem? Um, I just don't I, – I, that's not on my radar. If I can be known as the guy that kept winning after Chip Kelly, that's, I'm good with that. Coach, uh, the re returning uh, players that have really stepped up as leadership roles, can you kind of highlight which, uh, which players those have been so far you've noticed? Uh, well, it, all we've seen really is in the spring – because uh, we haven't been on the field, so to speak, yet. But the guys that really jumped out um, were, were Marcus, Ifo, Tony Washington, uh, Taylor Hart's done a great job, Hironis Grasu, Jake Fisher, um, have all have all been really vocal, positive leaders. Keenan Lowe is kind of a grinder by example type of guy. But all all those guys have done an exceptional job of just of just you know saw those guys out there lining guys up today at the walkthrough. Hey, make sure you check, you know, check the special teams jet chart, come, you know, dress this way, do this, do that. And a lot, exactly what we need to, to have on, to be a great team. Coach, after uh, Kelly's tenure here and the success he had, talk about the pressures you feel. Have you talked to him at all? Has he offered you any advice at all on what to do and what to expect coming up? Um, I've talked to him a bunch of times. Um, and again, that kind of goes back to the expectation that that's great. That's, you know, that's, expectations and pressure that that exists sure but it doesn't all that stuff doesn't matter it matters what what your players believe in what you believe in and how you go about executing those things and that's work let's go to work um, as far as advice the the only thing that he said is is exactly what he said that um, coach Bilotti said to him in that transfer of power and he said be yourself I've got no choice Mark what are you what are you sort of expecting this year out of Byron Marshall and sort of the improvements you expect to see from him? Uh, the question was about Byron Marshall and that he's a perfect guy of a guy, whether it's him or, or Derek Malone or, or, you know, somebody in that, Hey, it's time to step up type of, of mode. You, you just don't know. Some guys are motivated by that. You know, they're the, they're the next guy at the pump type of mentality and they don't want anybody else around the pump before they can have true confidence and, and just wholehearted uh, commitment to the, to the system. Um, and then there's, there's newcomers too, you know, guys, whether they're uh, recruited or guys that, that have just been in the system a little bit longer than others and how they mature over the, this, this spring to summer phase is this is the best time of year. You, you get to see your, your newcomers. This afternoon is the first time we'll get to see a guy, you know, at the same position like Thomas Tyner, Kanai Benoit, are those guys all they're, they're cracked up to be, you, you know, you find that stuff out. Uh, and then all the other guys, Joe Walker, Raheem Cassell, uh, Hardrick, you know, all, all those guys that, that, that there's, they see the opportunity and now, now do they seize it. Coach? What's been the most challenging part for you making the transition from an offensive coordinator to the head coach? Um, I don't know. Um, just being honest, uh, I think the, the, we have great people here. You know, and they've made that uh, the, all the transitions a lot easier. A lot of the, again, eight of the ten coaches for the last four years are still here. So we all know kind of what 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 our hot buttons are, what our what our how we motivate each other, all those things that that go into that. And I think that would be the biggest thing coming into a new place is just, you know, not only the newness of the people, but the management of the people that are already there and making sure everybody's on the same page. We we have that. Um, and now our, our biggest thing in terms of, uh, you know, recruiting and going into the new facility and all those things is probably making sure that we're bringing in the right people. 
you know, just being even more selective. We're going to be able to get on a lot of people's, uh, you know, top two, top three, all those things, but we need to make sure that they're our top one, two, or three guy, more so, more, more now more than ever. Going uh, back to the facilities, you uh, once said there was a time when you were a kid that, you know, you could play a full field football out there at Autzen. Uh, given that, did you ever envision that a, a building like this could have been uh, put up now or <laughs> I probably would have lost that bet you know gr growing up if if uh, we were talking about this the other day if somebody would have told me in the last 10 years that we'd have this building Texas wouldn't go to a bowl game and Washington would go winless that I would have lost that bet I would not have bet by NCAA regulation of course I would not have bet but <laughs> if if I would have I would have lost um, but it, it's, it's just a commitment, I mean, it's just a demonstration of the commitment of this place. And you look back again the other night at that, that donor function, there, there were people there, you know, during the lean years, uh, very lean years. And, and to see the look on their face, and, the, and there, wasn't, there, there was never, I talked to Paul Wiggins, Marcus Woods, a bunch of guys that had an opportunity to do a lot of special things and, and would have definitely at this point had an opportunity to be jealous and maybe they were a little bit, but it was a, a tremendous sense of pride, you know, of we built this place type of a, a, a mentality. And, and, and Coach Brooks and Coach Bellotti hopefully are sitting there with, you know, a huge smile on their face because they, you know, they were a huge part in this. And absolutely Chip is, as, as well in terms of forming the, the back end of this project. And so I think for all the right reasons, it's, it's Oregon. You know, it's very Oregon. It's become, we've become an adjective uh, for how... Uh, how, how it's been done. Coach, now that you've had a chance to be in it, how big of an impact is that football facility going to have on recruiting in your mind? Um, I think it's going to be huge. I think it's just, uh, we, we, like I, t I told our team last night, we, we expect them to do unconventional things and we support them in an unconventional way. And it's a commitment to our student athlete. Um, it's a commitment to, to, you know, now we can even ask more out of them because we can support them even better we can we can coach them better we have uh true facilities where where every position room is 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 taken care of in a in a you know a good teaching environment whereas in the past we didn't we didn't have that we didn't have every guy accounted for um and from a recruiting standpoint i think it's in, immeasurable uh, the the response has obviously been off the charts uh positive um and then it gets, just goes back to us our 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 first two things when we talk about recruits are character and attitude and that can never change and never will change. Mark, back here. Uh, re with regards to the building, is there one thing that really jumped out at you that made you say, wow? And also, were you, uh, are you surprised or did you expect the kind of national reception and the publicity, which you were just talking about, that that building has got? I mean, it's been everywhere, New York Times on down. If I'm ever gonna go to a marketing, a place to learn about marketing, I'm going to go to Beaverton, Oregon and ask them some questions. So, I, I, no, I'm not surprised by how, how the marketing campaign and how that's uh, resulted in, the, in the, the, the onslaught of publicity that, that, it, that it's been. Um, favorite part, that's a great question. Um, I don't have a favorite part. Uh, there's a lot of them, a lot of great parts. Um, give, me a, give me a couple weeks and I'll, I'll, I'll give you an answer to that question. Coach? One of the characteristics of Coach Kelly was uh, ponderance of going for it on sh fourth down quite often. And I assume you agreed with him most of the time, but do uh, you generally have that same philosophy? There's times, of course, they went, decided not to go for it, kick the field goal, missed it. So, I mean, did you sometimes disagree if you would have been head coach? Or how do you, just generally, how do you look at that? That is such a huge, all-encompassing question. Um, in general, absolutely. I, I believe in, in, in you know, the risk-reward of going forward on fourth down. I think if you look at the percentages of football and the percentage of being aggressive, the percentages of, of attacking, that wins the majority of the time. When you decide not to and you make a field goal, that seems like a great idea. When you decide not to and you miss a field goal, you're an idiot, and that's part of the deal. Um, so. In general, absolutely. You know, uh, that's our that's our deal. That's our style. That's our belief, um, and that will continue. Mark, back here in the back. These are really bright, by <clears> the <throat> way. Yeah. 
Can you talk about the mechanics of fall camp? Uh, what you'll be working on this coming week as you lead up to the first game? Um, how much pace or is you're going to try to quicken the pace? What are some of the mechanics of, of fall camp that that uh, that are important to you? The mechanics of fall camp in terms of in, just in general, like schedule or, or? yeah, schedule um, drills. Uh, how much will change as far as drills and um, in general? Again, very little. Uh, how we practice is is a. It's something that, that it, it's an ongoing process. Uh, if, if, if we don't think something shows up in a game, we don't do it. If we don't think it makes us better as a football team, we don't do it. Uh, if, we, you know, if we change something here and there, we, we t tweak a drill in that, in that vein. Um, but in, in general, it's almost exactly the same as we've done for the past four years from a structure standpoint. Uh, how much individual time, how much drill time, how, you know, how much team time, that kind of stuff uh, is almost exact um within that you're gonna you're gonna tweak you know everything year to year from from uh how certain types of things but nothing that you would care to even know about maybe you would but it'd take too long coach uh, thomas tyner one of the local boys what's he gonna have to show what are you looking for out of him to to win playing time on this roster and and what kind of opportunity does he have to come right in He's got a great opportunity to come right in. He's got the, the you know the same opportunity as everybody else at that position. Um, these guys have to, to make plays and take care of the ball. It's very you know very simple. And make plays for us is run full speed. If you don't have the ball, it's block. It's be, be a great player on special teams. Uh, you look at the past and and you know Kenyon Barner, DeAnthony Thomas, LaMichael, all those guys were great special teams players. And and that's our our playmakers are playmakers. Fast guys run fast all the time. Um, so that that's all part of it, and part of his deal is is learning that. You know, I'm sure he wasn't expected to do that uh, in high school as much, and looking forward to forward to it. He's a guy that I've never seen, you know, never seen practice live yet. That's again part of the part of the process of, of what's so fun this time of year, seeing those new guys out there, uh, and looking forward to that very much. Coach, with uh, preseason expectations, a lot of high rankings, how do you temper guys' excitement and keep them focused on the first game and week in, week out, keep them focused in that, in that manner? Uh, you talk about your system. You talk about your process. We did that last night. And, and again, it goes back to August 5th. We can't worry about, you know, we can't worry about losing to Stanford last year. We can't worry about playing somebody else this year. We have to worry about us on August 5th. And our guys believe in that wholeheartedly. Part of that is, is, is keeping the culture with the young guys and educating them. Uh, part of that is is uh, an ongoing process that will be forever of of keeping young men focused on the task at hand, which is that that's a job, uh, and and part of the challenge, part of the fun, part of the excitement that goes into it. Coach, what's the what's the concept behind the loud music during practice? Game day experience. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on game day, whether it's crowd. There's music, there's you know, cameras flying all over the place, cheerleaders, uh, distractions, and we're trying to simulate that element. Trying to, trying to, we try to get our guys as much, to, to a certain extent, outside of their comfort zone, worse than game day. We try to go faster, we try to go harder, we try to do more. Uh, so game day, again, it, game days, game days just, just go. Just be yourself, let your, your ability take over, let your, what, you've, what you've ingrained in your, in your brain take over and go. Coach, if you had to make an educated guess, who is the fastest guy on the team? Tom Osborne. <laughs>